What's up guys, this is the House from Gun Gamers. I know it's been a while. Uh, luckily my camera is working now. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my camera was broken and I was waiting to get it fixed and now it's back. So here I am back with videos. And uh, the first video I'm coming back with is actually a gun review. Today I will be expressing my thoughts on the Lancer Tactical Proline M4 RIS. Uh, this gun was sent to me by Lancer Tactical uh, pretty much at the beginning of this summer, and they told me, hey, you know, we want you to run this, give your thoughts on it, do a review of it, and that's precisely what I did. This summer, I used this as my primary at a couple of private games with the Gun Gamers crew. I used this as my primary at Desert Fox events this July, and I also used this as my primary at Pale Horse, a game at Sector 7 in August. So I've actually used this gun a, a good bit at a variety of events, and I've probably put at least 10,000 BBs through it at this point. So I feel like I've got plenty of usage with it to actually give a pretty well-informed opinion of how I think it performs. One note I do want to make before I start is that this gun was clearly used before it came to me. Uh, it came in the standard Lancer Tactical box, but it came without any of the accessories that usually come with this gun. It actually came without the carry handle, it came without the uh, manual, it came without any of the BBs or anything. It just came like bare gun and the box. So I think that this gun was used before it was sent to me. Uh, if you wanna take that as a factor of the review, that's up to you. I just wanted to disclose that. To start, what are the basics of this gun? Well, the most basic data I can give you is the velocity and the rate of fire. So this gun, since I got it, has pretty consistently shot right around 1.3 joules. I'll put up some chrono readings here. This gun was chronographed with g g.3 gram BBs, and it comes in pretty consistently right around 1.3 joules with a velocity deviation of just under 10 feet per second. So plus or minus five feet per second from an average average, which not bad for a stock gun. Uh, the gun also surprisingly comes in with just shy of 25 rounds per second of a rate of fire with an 11.1 .1 volt battery. Uh, I actually did take the motor out of the grip to make sure I wasn't given one with some weird upgraded motor, but uh, it clocked in at 25 rounds per second with what looks to be a pretty standard ferrite motor. Uh, the magnetism on this is not particularly strong. So I'm going to chalk that up to maybe the fact that the MOSFET is actually eliminating a lot of the resistance. There is an inline MOSFET in this gun. It is contained in the buffer tube or stock area. and. I think that that does help eliminate a lot of resistance and jacks up the rate of fire pretty significantly. I have been using this gun on an 11.1 .1 volt LiPo pretty much exclusively. Uh, one downside I would say of this gun right off the bat is that the stock, about the biggest batteries that you're going to fit in this stock are your Titan Power or HPA lithium ion batteries. Anything bigger than those is not going to fit in this stock. Now granted, those batteries have plenty of capacity so, you know take that for what it's worth. I have been running it mostly on 11.1 .1 volt lithium uh, polymer buffer tube lipos though. Now in addition to the pretty ridiculous rate of fire, the trigger response is actually pretty good. Uh, it sounds pretty good, it feels pretty good, and I have never had any complaints with not being able to spam the trigger fast enough. Uh, ironically, that's probably aided by something I don't particularly like about this gun. So. As you can see, this looks for the most part like a pretty standard M4A1 RIS type of configuration. Except it has this Tango Down pistol grip, well, Tango Down style, it's probably not licensed, has this Tango Down style pistol grip, has this weird enhanced trigger guard, and this flat trigger. And I look at this and I'm like, you were this close to perfection. You could have made this look like a pretty standard M4 RIS, had that classic old school flare, and then that, the pistol grip, whatever, but the trigger guard and the trigger, to me, like really stand out as, oh boy, you were, you were so close to that old school block one coolness, and then you just, you know, messed it up at the last second. Uh, so the flat trigger feels nice, and it works pretty well. But uh, 
honestly, I got to say, I'm not a fan of the aesthetic on this particular gun. Uh, I would be more forgiving of it on some of the other Pro-Line models, but on this one, I really think you should have gone with the classic curved trigger. I think that that would, uh, I think that would make the gun look a lot better. Speaking of things I don't like externally, I'm just going to get those right out of the way because while this is a budget gun, there are a couple of things on the externals that really do kind of bother me. Uh, I mean, for one, there's the trigger that I just went over, but the other thing I don't like is that the bottom rail wobbles. So I don't know how much you can see that movement, but the bottom rail does wobble enough that it, uh, it really annoys me when you're trying to get a good grip with this thing or do barricade bracing with it. Uh, I do wish that the bottom here was a little bit, just a little bit more solid. The top rail is really solid actually. Like I would be more than confident putting my D-ball on here for night vision use, but the bottom rail just wobbles like a bastard. and I'm not really into that. The other problem I have with this gun externally, or another problem I have with this gun externally, is that the front sling swivel actually broke on me in the middle of the Desert Fox game. I was running this with a two-point sling, as you can see that I've got on here, but now I have a cloned CQD sling mount on here because unfortunately the front sling swivel the pin just broke or came out or something. And uh, yeah, now I no longer have a front sling swivel that mounts incorrectly. So I'm pretty disappointed that the sling swivel was not actually serviceable, but you know, unfortunately there are things that you're going to have to expect to compromise on on a $180 gun. But on a classic style M4, you do wish that that type of thing would work, considering it's one of the main ways that you would mount a sling on this. The stock actually fits on here pretty solidly, and there's really no wobble. And the butt plate, I like the system for it. It does not come off on accident very easily. Uh, it's very solid. You really do have to pinch those tabs to get it off. And then you actually have to hook it in on the top in order to get it to reseat. So the butt plate is nice. I like the stock overall. Uh, doesn't hold huge, huge batteries, but in terms of the actual design and the fitment on the gun, I think it's a pretty good option. Uh, it won't collapse all the way on mine because I have the battery in here, but that's a different issue. Overall, the external quality of the gun, I would say is as good as you're gonna expect for 180 bucks. Uh, it's not bad, it's certainly not horrible. It's nowhere near as bad as what I used to get for $180 five or six years ago as an airsoft player, uh, but it's certainly not gonna compete with the likes of GNP and VFC. Uh, the finish and the paint overall is fine. You can see some spots, you can start to see some wear on some of the higher wear areas, but in general, it's held up fine over the course of the summer for my use, I think, and I wasn't particularly gentle on it. I didn't exactly go out of my way to baby this gun since I wasn't sure Lancer Tactical wanted it back, and if they did, I figured they were okay with whatever wear I put on it in this review. Now, onto the internals of this gun, and one more thing that I'm going to criticize right off the bat is actually the way the MOSFET is. So when I take the battery out here, you can probably see that there is an inline MOSFET in the stock and this inline MOSFET is preceded with this whole nest of wires. Now, I do not particularly care for this configuration of inline MOSFET. Um, I wish that these wires were a little less bulky. I wish that the MOSFET itself was a little less bulky. And the reason being is that this takes up a surprising amount of space. Uh, if you want to run a buffer tube lipo in this, like if you ever wanted to swap this stock, you're pretty much screwed. You would need to rewire this whole gun if you ever want to run a buffer tube lipo without a crane stock on it. Um, and if you are running the crane stock, then fine. If you run batteries in the wings, then this occupies the buffer tube. If you're running a buffer tube battery, then you basically need to stuff this into one of the wings. So I do think the inline MOSFET configuration is a little bit inconvenient and impractical in my opinion. I think it's got some limitations that need to be worked out yet. Um, also the wiring seems kind of thin. Uh, I have not had any issues with the electronics in this gun, but I have heard a couple of people I've talked to have had a couple of electronic problems with some of these. I can't really attest to how widespread that is as my example has worked just fine and I have like one or two anecdotal examples of talking to various people who said, oh, well, I had an electronics problem with mine. And I think some of that might come down to the wiring. The wiring is just a bit thin for what I would prefer, but ultimately, it's a $180 gun. So how much of these criticisms can I make before you understand 
it's a $180 gun. <laughs> One other thing I want to talk about the MOSFET real quick is that this does actually have a battery cutoff feature. So when you're running a lithium polymer or lithium ion battery in this gun, the MOSFET will actually cut off power to the motor and power to the whole gun when it detects that that battery is reaching its low point, you know, lower than you should discharge it safely. Um, I like and don't like this feature. I like this feature because for a beginner who this gun is largely marketed toward, it will help them protect their batteries and it does discharge them to roughly a good storage type of charge. Uh, what I dislike about this feature is that it kind of does so without any warning. So you really do need to have an extra battery on you at all times to make sure that you really can swap on the go as soon as you get that cutoff tripped. Because uh, it doesn't tell you battery getting low, there's no real warning, you don't really feel the rate of fire or the trigger response starting to slow down. It just kind of happens. So you're gonna need to make sure you have an extra battery with you at all times when you're using this gun. And uh, like I said, I like that feature because it kind of protects newbies from ruining their batteries. I don't really love the impl implementation of that feature though just because it means you have to have some forethought, which uh, I'm an idiot, I can't be trusted with that. As to the rest of the performance aspects of this gun, um, like I said, I've put just over 10,000 BBs to this gun that was already used when I got it. And in terms of performance, I've actually been pretty happy with it through, uh, through all of my use of it. I think that in general, it's been plenty durable. Uh, it hasn't broken on me, it hasn't given me any problems, and I have yet to actually encounter a single hiccup with this gun, other than the one time it cut off on me in the middle of a firefight and I had to swap batteries, but that's to be expected with the battery cutoff feature. Uh, the one weakness I would say maybe is the fact that it, the website boasts that this gun comes with a 6.03 millimeter type bore in her barrel. And while I'm not gonna say the accuracy on this gun is bad, I am gonna say it could certainly still do with a hop up and barrel upgrade if you really wanna squeeze better range and accuracy out of this gun. Uh, it, I don't know if the quality of the bore of the 6.03 millimeter type bore is really as good as some of the more aftermarket offerings, but it's a $180 gun, say it with me, take a shot. Uh, so it's as good as can be expected. It will hop 0.32 gram BBs. Uh, you're pretty much maxing out the hop to make that happen, but it will hop 0.32 gram BBs, which is what I was using at Desert Fox events and at Pale Horse, and it will do so respectively, and it will get accuracy out there. I found engagements out to 150 to 200 feet with three twos were pretty easy to do for commercial off the shelf average ammo that your average person who's buying an average $180 gun is gonna be putting through it. I think it's just fine. And I think really that's kind of my theme with this review is the gun doesn't, simultaneously it doesn't excite me to a ridiculous degree because it just does a bunch of things pretty well while being held back in some smaller details of what I would call things that maybe more experienced players would really notice, like the fact that the sling mount doesn't work, the fact that the rail wobbles, the fact that the inline MOSFET really limits your stock options. But all of those things are things that can be fixed with aftermarket parts and uh, just out of the box for, again, say it with me, a $180 gun, I think it's actually pretty good overall. It's certainly a lot better than any beginner guns I could have gotten when I was getting into the game for $180, and it's certainly a lot better than any guns that were $180 five or six years ago. So, uh, yeah, I guess what I'm trying to struggle out here is for the price point, a recommendation. I think that this is overall a pretty good gun. It's got a couple of things that could yet to be improved, in my opinion. I think Lancer Tactical could do uh, maybe a little bit of a better job thinking out the inline MOSFET and with the wiring, uh, and probably some tighter quality control on the rail and maybe a more uh, robust sling mounting solution. And of course, don't ruin that classic M4 aesthetic. But that said, overall for the performance, for the durability of it, for the luck I've had with it, I think it's pretty good. I would certainly not hesitate to hand this off to a newer player and trust that they would probably have a good time with this at your average weekend game. Uh, I think that for the niche this is trying to fill, it's uh, 
gun that someone can pay a respectable price for and get some respectable performance out of. Now that is of course my opinion based on this example of this gun. So if you have one of these or you have your own experiences with one of these, my comment section, I always try to keep a resource. So put your experiences with this gun, good, bad, or indifferent down in the comment section. And anything that you think I missed, be sure to include that as well. But overall, uh, I do want to thank Lancer Tactical for sending me this gun for review. Um, hopefully they found this informative and hopefully you found this informative. Thank you very much for watching and I have been eHouse with Gun Gamers and I will see you next time. Peace. Thank you for watching this video from Gun Gamers. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. Check the description below if you'd like to buy a t-shirt or a patch. And use the coupon code JUDY10 for 10% off of your next order at Amped Airsoft. Thank you again for watching, and praise Judy.